1959, Dr. Halliday, a uh, Vancouver physician, uh, came up with the idea that, first in the world, that he could uh, offer assistance to people who were addicted um, to opiates by getting them onto a medically supervised program. And since that invention in 1959, we're still doing basically the same thing. So we provide people with supplemental opiates. We uh, don't just uh, give them drugs. Comparing methadone maintenance to what is the next treatment, let's say, uh, the next other option you would have, which would be um, an abstinence-based model where you get someone into a, into a program where they spend the night and they, you know, they get counseling and all that. That has been studied. And to many people, it sounds like a better option. You're not giving people who have addiction drugs. Well, it might sound better, but when they've studied it, it has a 10 times or 11 times, actually, higher mortality rate. After investigating it myself, uh, I came to the conclusion that this is the right thing to do. People who uh, are on the street drugs have an alternative now, and it's basically it's an alternative lifestyle. So they can get their family back, they can get their um, children back, they can get uh, a job back, their job back, or keep their job, uh, get their housing back. Like it can make that kind of a big difference. Not necessarily in, in the next week, but um, usually within a year or two. There's never been a superior treatment, despite many studies since the 60s, um, there's never been a better treatment for chronic refractory opiate addiction than opiate substitution would treat with counseling. Uh, over time, it becomes more and more just like a vitamin and less and less like a drug. It really doesn't have uh, a very powerful uh, effect. Like it's, it's noticeable in the sense of um, if you drink a coffee, you feel a little bit more awake. The supports that I received while taking the methadone made all of the difference. Um, Top-notch counseling, yoga, a drop-in, case management, that has to be considered an integral part of the treatment program. Methadone allowed me to be able to not feel as though I, I, I was uh, a slave to that. It's really important to uh, when the person seeks treatment, when they come to my office, I'll just speak for myself, um, to uh, really connect up with the person in terms of their sort of humanity and their dignity. And, and the patients that I see end up, uh, you know, I, I treat them uh, on a humane level and they treat me on a humane level and they're not a drug addict anymore. They're a patient trying to get help. I think stigma results when we're not able to allow ourselves to be open enough to identify with difference. We worry that something like that could happen to us. When I say like that, I mean somebody who's really down and out or, or different or um, struggling with addiction. We don't want to be like them. We other people. I think stigma is about othering. It is a very heterogeneous group and I have no doubt for sure that I could present 10 of my patients um, uh, to somebody and say, guess what the illness is? And they would never guess that it was addiction. It's what I call the invisible majority of methadone patients. And they are just everyday people that uh, you wouldn't be able to tell any difference. I think that people are generally surprised when they learn who in their communities and in their families and in their social circles are on methadone just because of the level of stigma that's associated. And I think that just serves to show us um, that this is something that can touch anybody's life. I work with men and women um, from a variety of ages and different occupations. Um, I've worked with people who are lawyers, who are construction workers, who are teachers, um, who are mothers and fathers. Um, another misconception is that it's bad for you or that it causes some kind of harm. Uh, when uh, really physically speaking it causes, it has very little side effects um, and it is, it's a very safe medication. So I think that the general public and sort of neighborhood groups uh, need to understand that methadone won't bring crime to your neighborhood, that methadone um, is often seen as a crime for prevention measures. Usually people who are accessing methadone clinics are, are trying to make changes and, and one of the big 
changes people want to make is to not feel that they have to resort to crime to get to stay well all the time. Um, since also since methadone isn't injected, uh, it doesn't suddenly bring an influx of needles into it into a neighborhood. I think what contributes to changing the opposition to people being not necessarily totally in favor of the clinic, but but a much more uh, positive approach to the clinic has to do totally with education, communication. Give them the information about methadone and methadone clinics and people always rise to the occasion. I mean, I hope for lots of change. I hope that we look at things more holistically and also we look at the whole person, not just that part that is addicted to opiates. I think a society is a better place when it does seek to enhance the lives of even, I guess, the least of its members or the people that uh, are not able to advocate for themselves. And then in, in doing so, I believe that eventually those people will be a great asset to that society because there is no better teacher than experience. Connection. Respect. Possibility. Love. Life. Relief. Connection. Collaboration. Complicated. Effective.